When hobby hunter Johnny Bush from Columbus, Nebraska first stumbled upon the strange hole in the tree line, he was baffled by it but also very curious. This could not be natural. But who would keep this circle so perfect in the middle of the forest and why? After some debating, Johnny decided he just had to go through the hole to find out the truth. The pathway behind the perfect hole in the tree line was getting narrower with every step as Johnny was quickly trying to make his way deeper into the forest. It also started to become early quiet around him, like he was completely alone in the woods. Then suddenly, he had reached the end of the path. Johnny's heart started to beat faster. After hacking away the last couple of branches in front of his face, he finally got a view of what the hole in the tree line had led him to. He instantly froze up. Johnny's eyes went wide and he started to scream for help. He could not believe it. One thing was for sure, he was not supposed to be here. But what had created this strange, perfect hole? What did it lead to and how did it scare Johnny so much? Hunter Johnny had spent many years of his life in these woods and assumed that he knew them like the back of his hand. But he would soon make a discovery that would turn this perception upside down. A strangely perfect circular hole in the tree line that he could not possibly explain. Today Johnny had been chasing a deer for at least an hour. It had been the first real target worthwhile he had seen in two days of hunting, so he was not planning on letting this one get away from him. But the deer was not making this easy, as it just kept walking away from him, getting into areas of the forest Johnny had never been in before. Finally, Johnny felt like he had the perfect shot lined up. He put his finger on the trigger, but just as he was about to squeeze it, a loud scream went through the forest. This distracted Johnny enough to miss his easy shot. The deer got spooked and ran off, but Johnny saw where it was going. But he could barely believe it at first. When the deer jolted away after being scored by the missed shot, it escaped through a strange hole in the tree line. But this was not like anything Johnny had seen before. He had to rub his eyes a couple times before he believed it was real. A perfect circle that was so large that he could jump through it with his arms raised. How the hell could this be here? Johnny highly doubted that something like this could exist in nature. So it almost had to be man-made Johnny thought. But by who and why? Johnny carefully got closer to the hole to see if he could maybe learn some more about it. After the strange scream and the following commotion in the forest, it had gotten eerily quiet deep between the trees. You cloud probably hear a pin drop at this point. Johnny started by inspecting the edges of the circle. He went to see if he could find any signs that they had been recently cut into this perfect circle. He also checked the ground if he could find any traces of this. But he was very surprised that he found no evidence of this at all. From what he could see, it was looking like the trees had just grown into this position naturally. The branches got smaller the closer they got to the opening, there was nothing on the ground that indicated excessive cutting or something. But that just didn't make sense. As Johnny was still inspecting the hole, the eerily silence was suddenly rudely disrupted by another one of the devilish screams that had spooked him earlier. But now he was able to pinpoint the origin of the sound much better. It was obvious that the scream came out of the direction of the hole. And this was also the first time Johnny got a bit of a better look at what was behind the hole in the tree line. Up till now, he had only concerned himself with the entrance itself. But there was so much more to this strange discovery. There was a clear pathway after the hole. It was not nearly as wide as the hole was and actually seemed to get quite narrow very quickly. But this had to be the path the deer had used to escape. But by this point, Johnny had nearly completely forgotten about the animal. That scream. It almost sounded human this time. Could there be people around here? People in need? Maybe they had found this hole before him and went through to explore. But so deep into the forest, anything could happen if you are not experienced. Johnny felt his heart starting to race when he wanted to set the first step through the hole. What if there was something going on here that he also was not prepared for at all? Everything here just seemed so weird. But he could not just ignore the scream, right? After a bit of deliberation, Johnny decided to just bite the bullet and follow the path behind the hole. He could not just walk away from this now if there was somebody that needed his help. He would never be able to forgive himself if he did that. He started slowly but surely making his way on the path. It quickly got to a point where Johnny was sure the deer that had fled could not have gotten to. But he also did not see any other way the animal could have gone. Something that further confused Johnny. What he also noticed is that it seemed like nobody had made their way across this path in a long time. He really struggled to get through all the branches, but before he went through it, everything was still completely intact, just like with the prefect hole. The further he got away from the entrance into the tree line, 
the darker it seemed to get around him. Johnny started to doubt more and more if he had made the right decision going on this journey. Nobody even knew where he was at this point. He had already checked his phone, but he had no signal at all in this place. But this was something his friends and family were used to. They sometimes did not hear from him for multiple days, so they would not be worried about him for a while. By this point, Johnny was already going down the path for a solid 10 minutes, and he had not heard any scream or anything like that for all this time. He was wondering if he had maybe got the direction wrong. But then he finally started to get to the end. The narrow path finally started to get wider and even seemed to head for some sort of clearing. With more light coming through the treetops now, Johnny could actually see that there was something in this clearing, something that he never expected to be so deep in the forest. There was an old worn-down mansion that started to doom up between the trees. It was almost like something out of a bad horror movie. What the hell was a house of this size doing here, so far away from civilization? But Johnny was going to find that out soon enough. The house looked abandoned, but Johnny could not help but worry that there was someone of something in there that could be responsible for the perfect hole in the tree line. There simply had to be a connection between that hole and this house. Johnny just did not yet know what. Johnny heavily doubted if he should go into the house. He had already called out to see if he could get a response, but it had stayed silent. He knew that the best thing he could do now was to turn around and leave, but curiosity is a powerful motivator. Johnny tried to swallow his fear and walked towards the old worn-down mansion. The front door was already opened up, so getting inside was not going to be a problem. However, leaving the building would turn out to be a whole different story. There was some sunlight coming through the few windows in the mansion, enabling Johnny to get somewhat see that hallway he had just stepped into. It had obviously suffered from time, but it was all in a bit of a better state than he expected. In all honesty, it was not in too bad a shape. But did that mean that somebody was actually living here? And if there was, was Johnny then trespassing? It was a risk, but it could also mean that there would be somebody Tony could get an explanation from here. And let's not forget, Johnny was also still armed. If there was somebody here that intended to cause him harm, his rifle would probably quickly their mind, and so Johnny decided like to continue to fear exploring how wrong he would turn out to be. He first went into the kitchen as Johnny figured that here there would be some dead giveaways as to if somebody was living here, or even if somebody only occasionally visited. He opened up all the drawers and quickly came to a conclusion. Everything here was empty. No canned food, no water, no nothing. If somebody ever came to this place, they had to be bringing their own food and water. But that seemed like the biggest hassle ever seeing how deep in the forest this house was. The rest of the house seemed to tell a similar story. Most rooms were in decent shape still, but gave all the signs that nobody had lived here in many years. Johnny had been wandering around the mansion for about an hour, and still had very few answers, until he got to a small office room. Even before he opened the door to the office, he already noticed something that caught his attention. There seemed to be some light coming from under the door, but not just sunlight, it looked warmer and moved around a bit, like something was flickering. When Johnny opened the door, his eyes went wider and in his mind, all the theories about nobody having been in this house in years went out the window. In the office, there were no windows. The light came from multiple lit candles spread throughout the room. Johnny was stunned. By the looks of things, these candles had not been on that long. Most of them were still very much intact, so somebody had to have recently been here to light them. But who? And why? Then his attention was drawn to something on the desk. It was an old newspaper, and the black and white picture on the front cover was immediately recognized by Johnny. It was an old picture of the house he was currently standing in. But in the picture, the house was still very much in pristine condition. Before he read the article, his eyes first started scanning the rest of the front page, looking for the date that this paper was issued. He quickly found out that this had been published over 30 years ago. Then he started reading. Johnny quickly found that he had not just wandered upon any old house. This place had a lot of history, a lot of dark history. Apparently, it had been built around 1950 by a millionaire who had been rumored to be losing his mind and wanted to get away from people and society. But not 10 years later, it had been discovered that this had all been a lie and that the millionaire had just wanted an isolated place where he could give in to all his evil desires which were never supposed to see the light of day. It was only because a young man had managed to get away from this place and report everything he had experienced to the police. The millionaire had been arrested only days later and the house was left behind abandoned. The article had called it the Devil's House and seeing as probably nobody had wanted to buy it due to its history and the location, 
it had just been left to be reclaimed by nature. But judging by the decent-looking inside of the house and the lit candles, somebody did not agree with this. But as Johnny was frantically looking around the room, looking for cliques as to who could be responsible for all this, a sudden heard a creaking sound coming from above him. Then something came crashing down and Johnny could only just dive out of the way. A ladder had come walling from the ceiling and when Johnny looks up, he sees that a hatch has also been opened to Dobis hatch. Somebody was up there. The person who was responsible for the candles, the state of the house, and most likely the strange perfect circle he had gone through to get here. Johnny nervously made his way up the stairs and eventually climbed up on the high balcony he had seen on top of the house when before he had initially gone in. But he was not alone on this balcony, as there was a person half covered by a blanket looking out into the forest. The person did not turn around when Johnny made his way up the ladder and only acknowledged him when Johnny called out to him. Johnny had so many questions, but the first one was very simple. Who are you? The man, who had to be at least 50 years old by the looks of it, looked Johnny in the eyes for the first time and introduced himself as Matthew, a name that immediately rang a bell for Johnny as he had just read it in the newspaper article. He knew exactly who this was. Matthew was the name of the boy who had escaped from this house almost 40 years ago and reported the millionaire to the police. When Johnny asked for confirmation, the man gave it in the form of a simple nod. But now Johnny had a boatload more questions. Apparently, Matthew had tried to forget everything that had happened here for years after the millionaire was arrested. But something just kept drawing him back to this place. He could not explain it as he could not even be at equals inside the house without getting horrible flashbacks all the time. So he had taken to spending most of his time on the balcony. He divided his time between begging on the street of the city to buy food and water that he then took to the house where he stayed as long as possible or until he ran out of supplies. Nobody had been here in all this time. Matthew had even kept up the entrance perfect so that it would stand out to anybody who happened to pass by it in the hopes that it would make them curious enough to come through it. And it had now finally worked on somebody. Matthew was in desperate need of a friend and now that Johnny was here, he did not want to let him go. Johnny took a step back and almost stepped into a rope trap. He screamed as Matthew came towards him. Johnny only had a second to think. He ran forward and jumped over the edge of the balcony landing on the roof. He tried to carefully slide down but ended up with a lot of bruised and friction burns, but he made it down and started running for his life. Eventually managed to make it back to a party in the forest where he had a phone signal and quickly called the police to report what was happening in the old house. They promised they would look into it. But to this day, Johnny still doesn't know if they ever did. Johnny never went back to that part of the forest again and even stopped hunting for a couple months as he was so startled by the whole thing. Every time he knows sees a homeless man on the street his heart nearly stops as he fears it might be Matthew. But up until today, he has not seen him again.